Thank you for, for being here. Uh, first of all, uh, this, uh, this talk uh, is meant to be in English. Uh, does anyone have a problem with uh, that? Uh, should we switch to, to Spanish or, or English is okay? Okay. So uh, as I said, uh, thank you all for being here today. Uh, we are going to talk about how to build your static site with Python. Uh, we are going to cover uh, the basics, all, all the basics, how to, how to do it uh, with uh, three libraries in like three, four lines, and then uh, start building your, your own site, right? So uh, first, a small disclaimer. Uh, the opinions in this talk are my own and not of, of my employer. Uh, we'll see later why, but uh, there is a good reason for that. Uh, and then any code or, or information here, uh, please use it at your own risk. There is no guarantee with, uh, with this talk of uh, what comes here. But I've tried it. I've tried the code. I, I've tried uh, the site. So. The good reason I was mentioned about the, the opinions being, uh, being displayed are my own is because I'm not actually a, a web developer, uh, a professional web developer. I work as a data scientist uh, in a big company, uh, but uh, I really uh, enjoy and I really, I'm really passionate about Python, about uh, all the new technologies that uh, go out there. Uh, so that's the main reason for, for this talk. I'm, I'm not uh, a professional web developer, so I needed something very simple to, to start with. Uh, to start with uh, developing a website, deploying it, and uh, making it uh, available to, to the whole world. So uh, for a static uh, website, uh, this is the why, these are the reasons. But do you all know what a static site is? No, static site is just HTML code, HTML uh, files. Uh, so for that reason, for that reason, uh, this is a very simple way to develop or to deploy a first web page. Uh, this is usually not very professional. Uh, a colleague uh, before mentioned a whole bunch of reasons of uh, using other professional tools that are meant for more complex cases, for uh, different uh, professional use cases. But what happens if you are an engineer alone at home uh, trying to deploy a, a website? It usually happens that you have you don't have uh, lots of resources. You don't have uh, lots of uh, servers and, and all that. And you don't have a lot of time to, uh, to maintain, to secure, to do all those kind of things. So these are the main reasons for a static site. Uh, first one was uh, maintenance. Uh, I, had, um, I had a website uh, before. And um, I had it with a, with a CMS, uh, non-Python based, so it's out of the scope now. But the main problem was the maintenance. The maintenance wa uh, was, OK, uh, we need to, to um, like build a, a new page, or you have a blog and you want to post something. Uh, you want the builds. Uh, and then you have to upgrade your system. If you have to upgrade your system, uh, and if you are uh, doing it in your spare time or something like that, it is usually a problem. Uh, because you don't have the time, you have to know specifically what to upgrade, and uh, there may be problems in, in a production environment and, and what else. So for this, the maintenance, it's based in Python. It's based in Markdown. So if you know Markdown, it's a very simple language. We'll go uh, with Markdown later. Uh, you got 
incremental builds. So actually, you build a page, you deploy the page to the server, it's OK, and continuous uh, uh, deployment, continuous uh, integration. Then the security was one of the main parts, uh, because in just plain HTML, if you don't interact with a user in any way, what you're doing is, OK, you don't have elements of, uh, of security breaches there. You display a content, you don't interact. You can interact with the, with the user for a dynamic uh, part, but uh, these uh, libraries rely on external dependencies. So you want to integrate comments by, uh, with Facebook or with Discus, you can do it. But you rely on the security from Facebook, from Discus, which is actually, uh, in my case, it was actually better than the security I could provide for the page. Uh, so this is uh, the, obsoles the obsolescence was the other main reason we talked about that earlier, because you don't have to run to deploy uh, a platform update that uh, came out last night, and you have 24 hours to deploy it. Uh, and then technology changes are much smoother this way, because HTML is quite simple. And then the control, you, don't, uh, you, con you are in control of everything in, in your page. In your page, you control the cost, you control the performance, you control uh, which technologies you are placing there. So it's actually the control about what's in there and uh, what can be done. It's very modest, but in, in principle, it's very modest, but uh, you can control it. So why Python? Why Markdown? There are, another, uh, there are other platforms for other languages. But uh, why did I choose by Python and, and Markdown? Well, actually, this is a Python conference, so Python is a, a very, uh, or could seem a, a very uh, obvious uh, uh, election here. But uh, it's actually because we love the language. We are here because we love the language. It's easy to use and maintain. We could create uh, some extensions. We could create plugins. We could create everything in Python uh, for those libraries. And then we have the same, file, the same philosophy here of these libraries. So for Markdown, it's easy, it's simple, it's portable. It's just like opening a, a text editor and start writing. And uh, for me, it was very comfortable to write in, in Markdown or restructure test, which is uh, the other option, uh, most of the cases. So it's uh, quite, quite flexible for your needs. Uh, so if you don't need uh, very complex, very complicated things, it's actually a, a great option. <coughs> so how do we do this? Which are the libraries? OK. For, the, for Python, uh, we'll be using mkdocs. I'm sure you, some of you at least know this, uh, this library. This is used for when you have a project and you have the documentation of the project, okay, uh, you want to visualize it as a web page, okay. So for that, maybe MKDocs is uh, the best option. It's quite simple. Uh, it renders all the documentation you may have in Markdown, uh, and it renders uh, plain, simple. You have it all available. Uh, Nicole and Pelican are very similar. Uh, Nicole and Pelican are uh, similar in the way that uh, they could be used for blogs, they could be used for static sites, they could be used for many different uh, types of uh, websites. But uh, in these two cases, you have uh, extensions, you have a very, uh, a very customizable uh, way of doing your, your static site. It's not just place your documentation and render a, a website. So MKDocs, OK, it says there that it's fast, simple, downright. So uh, this is the, the description from the, from the home page of, of MKDocs. But uh, if you want to document a project, it's an excellent choice. Because you have the, the markdown, you render, 
deploy, and everyone has the documentation. Uh, they can search through, through the documentation of your, of your module, of your library, whatever. It's easy to use, easy to deploy, because you can move the, the actual folder. It, uh, it um, makes a new folder and places all the, uh, um, all the HTML files there. So you can move the folder to, to a server, and you have it uh, deployed. You can upload it. Uh, you can customize the appearance. There are some themes available, uh, but it's actually a, a matter of customizing the, uh, the view. And then you have live previews. You don't have to deploy uh, the first time. You can uh, do the live previews and then uh, deploy, and uh, it's a good way of, of doing it. How do, how do we create our site? in mkdocs. So we are in the terminal and we say, OK, make a new page, mkdocs, please. Make a new page and call it PyCon uh, mkdocs. And he says, OK, creating the project directory, placing, uh, uh, creating the, the config file, because it's in, in YAML language. Uh, also a uh, very simple language for, for config uh, files. And then write an index. So this is the first, uh, the first step. You place your own files in, uh, in the docs folder that uh, created, as I said, it creates the site folder, docs folder, and a sample file. You can put your own files there in Markdown. And then, OK, create the output. mkdocs, please, serve me the page. And what does mkdocs do? create the page, we have the page there. So actually, we can, uh, this is quite simple, but uh, in order to search a documentation or provide uh, a very simple way to, to do this, uh, it has actually um, links to different parts of the documentation, uh, inline links, links to other documentation, documentation pages, you have a search, uh, capability. So this is quite simple and quite powerful. So the next one would be uh, a Nicola. Uh, Nicola is uh, a bit more powerful. Uh, it has support for more professional uh, capabilities, such as automation, such as themes. You can uh, import their as extensions, you can create an extension, you can create a theme, you can customize nearly everything inside uh, Nicola. You have internationalization support uh, in terms of, okay, uh, I have my, my page in, in English and I can also uh, have the, the same uh, posts or, or the same pages in another, <coughs> in another language, Spanish, French, whatever. And then you have support not only for blogs, but for static pages and uh, for static uh, websites uh, different uh, from blogs. Uh, blog is a very straightforward way to deploy an e uh, static site, but they also have uh, the capability of uh, customizing your own static page. And this uh, serves as a replacement for uh, customer uh, CMS. Uh, a content management system. So uh, if you want to replace a professional CMS or another very co another complex CMS for this, uh, the main thing is th that you simplify all the process. Uh, this uh, also comes to, to another cost, we'll see later, but, uh, but you have this simplify. So how to create the site? It's almost the same. So you, you can init with uh, Nicola a new static site. Uh, with the demo option, it creates all the folders and, and, and a sample uh, uh, blog post and, and what have not. And you specify the name of the, of the folder. So it starts to ask. It starts to ask, OK, uh, what's the site title? What's your name as an uh, admin of, of the page, or 
who is writing the, the blog. Uh, in this case, what's your email? Uh, what's the language? Do you want comments or not? Uh, which kind of comments? Uh, the available comment systems by default is our uh, Discuss, Facebook, Google+, Intense Debate, ESO, Live Fire, uh, and Mute. So you can also uh, embed a, a comment system in, in your blog. And then um, you have to configure the time zone in order to make the, the deployment and all that. So it's a bit more complicated than uh, MK Docs. MK Docs didn't ask anything. But in this case, uh, the questions are yes or no questions. <coughs> so it's, it's a bit more complicated but you only have to uh, answer yes, no, my name is, whatever. So to create the site, the next, uh, the next thing is, OK, you have a post folder. You place, uh, you place there your, your files in restructured text, markdown uh, format. If you want to have also static pages other than the posts, you also have the pages folder. So you place the, the files there. Every file is, is a, a page or a post or a blog post. And then, well, you have an images folder to place your media content and, and all that. And then you create the HTML output. How? Nicola build. Nicola build, this command only uh, does one thing. Um, it sees the already created HTML output so it can automatically rebuild only the parts that have been changed. In that way, you, your deployments are uh, gradual and are only uh, meant to uh, fix the parts or create the parts that haven't been created before. And then uh, Nicola Surf. Nicola Surf is just the local way to deploy the, the page. In this case, you can visualize it in your, in your browser. We are going to do this, but uh, but this is a local way. It also has integration with other uh, sites for deployment, for automatic deployment. So the preview is, uh, could be like this. You can also change the theme and, and everything else. So this is a bit, uh, well, actually it's a, a bit different in the sense that you can do many things, but the visual aspect of the, of the pages are very similar. And then for, for Pelican, uh, for Pelican, the best thing is uh, probably the, the definition of why Pelican is uh, developed, which is, okay, I, I was tired of uh, writing uh, in Word in WordPress, uh, in WordPress and, and all that, and I just wanted to write Markdown. I just wanted to focus on my content. Uh, so it's also customizable, extensible. There are many themes available in, in GitHub. There is a, a repository. For that, there is another repository for, for plugins, Pelican themes, Pelican plugins. It also has internationalization support. And then uh, this, uh, this uh, library uh, focuses on blogs, but you can also uh, render static sites. But, it, but the main focus is, uh, is for blogs here. It, ca it has integration with uh, WordPress. If you have your site in WordPress, uh, it comes from a uh, built-in uh, import tool when, where you can import your uh, whole WordPress site independently of 10, 100, 1,000 pages. It, render, it imports all the WordPress site and you can have your site exactly like you had in WordPress but with Pelican, more secure uh, and more easy to maintain, easier to maintain. It also has integration with, with social networks and comments and, and that. So how to create uh, the site? It's actually more or less the same thing. Pelican quick start. You can also create, uh, create a site in a more difficult way. But uh, the questions are more or less similar. What's your name? What's the site? Uh, well, the, the URL. Uh, what's the, the language, the time zone? Do you want to use uh, SSH? to deploy FTP uh, to GitHub pages. So it comes with um, some uh, questions about deployment to facilitate that. 
So after answering all the questions in the, in the, first, uh, in the first place, uh, basically it's the same thing. You place your files, restructure, or markdown in content folder. You place the static folders, the static uh, pages in content uh, pages <coughs> folder, and you can create the output. You can create the output saying, OK, Pelican content, and it creates a new folder called output, called output. You render it with a, with a server that it, it comes uh, built in, in in Pelican, and you have your page. This is a booster-based uh, theme, uh, but uh, this is your page. It comes with uh, the blog, static pages in the upper part, some links, and what else. So how can I deploy my site? In mkdocs, you move the folder, whatever you want. Uh, in Nicola, you have uh, support for automatic deployment, support for GitHub, integration with uh, Travis uh, CI, which is a, a library for, for doing continuous integration. Uh, in Pelican, you have support for, like we, like, uh, we saw before, FTP, SSH, Dropbox, S3, Rackspace, GitHub. So you have lots of options to deploy the page automatically. So what did we, uh, what can we do? Write the markdown. This is the markdown file for mkdocs. We only wrote this in, uh, in a text editor. We rendered the page. So, this is, so we can focus on the content, iterate, maintain, because maintain a text file, a plain text file is quite simple. And it's simple and secure because if someone wants to inject the code with HTML, OK, it can be done. But you can render your original page, page move it uh, to the server, and you can redeploy your uh, page easily. So you can customize, as we said. OK, for mkdocs, it's simple. You forget about everything else. Uh, other than I want to create a site, and this is the content, uh, and you create and iterate very, uh, very quickly. You create, you visualize, you deploy, you then go back to creation, visualizing. So these iterations are quite quick. For Nicole and Pelican, themes uh, available, extensions, uh, incremental builds, support for continuous integration, whatever. And then you have support for other things. You don't have to stop at, at uh, static. You, rely, you can rely on external uh, providers to render dynamic content. For example, in Nicola, which is uh, mainly, uh, it has integrated support for many things. It has integrated support for YouTube videos, for Vimeo, for SoundCloud, for audios, uh, for GIST, for codes, for charts. Whatever. And then for Pelican, you have integrated support uh, for comments. So that's it uh, for this. But I, uh, this is the, the place where the slides will be. Uh, but I wanted uh, to show not only this, but uh, the page. So with, uh, I don't know if I can. OK. OK. So this is a, like a blog post. With Nicola, we built uh, a new site uh, with, uh, with the Nicola in it and the, and the page. And we just wrote the title, all the slack, the date, the tags for the blog post, uh, who's the author, the description, the category in a very simple, simple way to, to create it, and then the text. So this is restructured. This is not marked down. But uh, what I wanted to show is that it's very simple to create, to create things like, OK, I want to create the text and place a, uh, an image and um, 
concatenate these elements. So the with Nicola uh, with Nicola Bill and Nicola Ser. Let me see if I can. Okay. We have a web page with a very simple text file with three commands, with Python, with tools that we know we can create a simple website. So actually, uh, I hope you like this way of creating uh, websites because it's very powerful uh, for uh, some environments. It's something that uh, it can be taken into, into consideration. Thank you.